Has this ever happened to you? You're introduced to someone who hears your last name and they say, are you related to? And then you answer, well, I don't know. And then you make a note to yourself to check it out one of these days. It kept happening to Kara Vanninger, so she actually took the next step. It may rank as one of the most rewarding things she's ever done. Kara, how, right, how are you? Nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice to meet you. Oh, how you doing? You and I share a last name, but we hadn't met until a few months ago. Every time I introduce myself to someone and they hear my last name, they always would ask me, are you related to Denny? Mm -hmm. And for years, you know, especially when I was a, a younger kid, I was like, I don't know who that is. All and right. so I asked my parents, they said, oh, he's a famous soccer player. And yeah. yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are related um, as cousins, right? And uh, but we had never met, and so I thought it was high time that you and I met each other, and I'm so glad that I did. Aiden, Hello. what's Hello. up? Hello. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. You want to you want to talk on the camera? You want to say something? Yeah. You want to say something? Tell them how you like soccer. Oh, I'll shake it. For our first meeting, Denny invited me out to spend a Saturday morning with Spencer, the Special Needs Soccer Association. Yeah, boy! Whoa! It was a blast, but when it was time to sit down and discuss his legacy, not just as an athlete, but also as a coach, educator, and mentor, we needed to find somewhere a little quieter to talk. I was born in St. Louis, in South St. Louis, St. Anthony's Hospital, and I uh, grew up in St. Anthony's Parish, started playing soccer when I was in third grade, played with a club called Spanish Society. I was always a midfielder, and uh, I always got put in the game after we went in four or five nothing to make sure I didn't ruin anything that we didn't lose, So, I, I, but I had a passion for it, and I always read about it, and whenever I would go to the park or play with my friends to play softball or anything in the summer, I would always bring a soccer ball and everybody thought I was kind of weird about it. And I went to St. Mary's High School and I uh, tried out for every sport, basketball, baseball, football, and soccer, and never made any sport freshman, sophomore, or junior year because I was too little. My junior year, after about five games, the soccer coach had us for a typing class and uh, some of the other players on the team said they already asked me to be on the team. Then my senior year I, I played and then from there I went to Forest and Valley Community College and from there I went to Canada for a year, came back, played for the St. Louis Stars in the North American Soccer League for six years and then moved to Fort Lauderdale, played there for two years, moved to New Jersey, back to Miami and then back to St. Louis and ended my career with the Steamers for three years. What was the atmosphere like for soccer in St. Louis during that time? When I started with the Stars in 1973, we had about an average of 6,000 people at the games, which was a lot of people then because not a lot of teams were playing professionally and there weren't a lot of professional American soccer players. Uh, when we played the New York Cosmos, we would play at Bush Stadium. In fact, there was 32,000 people when we played there just for the fact Pele was on the team and they had a bunch of superstars. I went to Fort Lauderdale and they had an average of 16,000 people every game. They were sold out every game. So the, the attendance was picking up, the, the, the league was good, uh, there was more Americans playing, so it was, it was kind of the infancy of the professional soccer started in 1967, so I came seven years later after that, so it was kind of exciting. Did you get to meet Pele? Yes, I played with, not played with him, played against him three times. And uh, when I was a little kid, I always read about Pele. He was, if you, if you, or you watched the World Cup on Wide World of Sports, the only soccer game was every four years you got to watch soccer on TV. So it was a, a life-changing, life memory to meet him, get some pictures taken with him. And I actually have a shot where I'm playing at Bush Stadium where I'm in the background and he's dribbling the ball here and I'm just kind of standing on the field kind of watching him. It was kind of in awe. I bet that was a really cool moment to see one of your childhood yes, heroes, it was. and you're not just seeing him; you're you're on the same level right. as him. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Why soccer? Why did that capture your interest? Was it because <coughs> you were naturally good at it, or was it just something about the game itself? I don't know if I was naturally good at it. I worked at it pretty hard. I just liked the fact of when you, when you play soccer, if you're playing two against two, four against four in a backyard or at a park, 
you can kind of do what you want. You don't have to stay in one spot. You don't have to wait for something to happen. Soccer was a sport where you have the freedom to kind of do what you want. And, and once the game starts, coaches and parents aren't really involved because they can't come out on the field. So I like that part too. When you finished your career, what did you kind of move into after playing? While I was playing soccer, I took my National B coaching license and National A coaching license. So I was very fortunate when I quit playing that I became the director of coaching for the Bush Soccer Club. And I did that for 18 years. What's up? Hey. Oh, yeah. You got your kid? How are you? Yeah. Hey, I want you to meet Taylor. Taylor's my good friend. Hi. How are you? Claire's a really good soccer player. Yeah? Let's go. She don't want to miss the warm-up. Throughout his careers as both player, then coach, Denny remained involved in youth programs and camps, encouraging kids to have fun while playing soccer. From talking to people all over, they they love you, um, not just as you know a player, but as a leader in the community, and they really respect everything that you've done for the sport, um, and especially in the, on the youth side of things. What's your take on the climate around soccer at the moment? Has it changed since you were a kid? It definitely has changed. Parents are more focused. Uh, the players are playing 11, 12 months a year. Uh, when the season's over, they might have a personal trainer. Uh, the parents travel, you know, every holiday there's a tournament. So the kids are playing a lot more. The kids are a lot better. But as far as the parents being focused on the kids and the coaches focused on the kids, that's, that's good. But at some point it becomes overwhelming to the players. And we try to teach coaches to make sure that when you practice with the kids, number one, they have fun and you give positive feedback every single practice. You tell Jimmy, way to go, Jimmy, you're a great dribbler. Well, when you say that, Jimmy automatically feels like he's a better dribbler, he has more self-esteem, and he'll even go home and the parents say, how, how was practice? And he'll say, man, the coach said I'm a good dribbler. So the more you tell the kids more positive things, the more they feel better about themselves. And it's, it's a learning circle. The more you do something, the better you get. The better you get, the more fun it is. The more fun it is, the more you do it. So we try to instill in coaches that, hey, let the parents do what they want to do, but the kids need to show up. And from the first time you say do something for the whole hour is to have fun and, and play the game. The game's the best teacher. You don't learn how to play by sitting around, running laps, standing in line. You learn how to play by dribbling past somebody, trying to stop somebody, trying to score a goal, trying to dribble. So it's, it's, it really should be all about fun until you maybe get into high school or a little older, then you can pick a sport where you know, hey, I, I'm pretty good at this. We, we want kids to have a passion. We want them to show up to practice, run out of their car, run up to the coach, say, hey, coach, and then run up to their buddies and say, let's do this, let's play. And then when it's over, say, okay, can we keep playing? Can we, why do we gotta stop? And then when the season's over, can we keep playing? So it's, it's important to pass this passion on from adults to parents, to coaches, to the kids, and hopefully they'll have a passion and go home and dribble around their backyard and maybe break a garage window by taking a shot at it or something. That, that's what's fun. These days, Denny is Director of Coaching at the Missouri Youth Soccer Association, where he oversees coaching education, summer camps, and community soccer programs. So my role is to teach coaches how to coach kids, how to deal with parents, how to make sure that the kids practice during the week what's really gonna happen during the games. I get all my information from the United States education system and mainly from Manchester United, one of the top clubs in the world, exactly what they do, we kind of model. If you do the proper thing within an hour, kids can touch the ball three to 5,000 times. So if they touch the ball 4,000 times, three or four practices, they're probably gonna feel pretty comfortable with the ball. I visit schools, we have a school assembly program talk to the kids about who's responsible for you getting good grades, and then use soccer as the vehicle. And then we, soccer organization at the schools I go to in that little town or area, come back to the school and say, hey, if your child wants to play soccer, we got an eight-week program. So it's just, my role as a, as a PR person, as an educator, is just to promote soccer in general. That's my job, and I, I, I love it. It's great. And. Is Spence a part of this? Spence's special needs program is their members of Missouri Youth Soccer, yes, and they, they have a 
spring and the fall session. It's an incredible program. It's been going on for 25 years, and uh, the number of kids is around 140 now, but we have probably three to 400 volunteers from schools, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, soccer clubs, obviously, uh, a lot of college, Linwood, St. Louis University, Webster, Maryville, they come out and, and really help with the kids, and it's an eight-week program, and the kids are so excited every Friday night, they, they got their t-shirt out there, they don't want to miss soccer. The kids get uniforms, they get a ball, so there's over 200 volunteers, there's over 100 kids, parents are there, college coaches, high school coaches, professional players, they're, they're all out there having fun with the kids. Some kids will come out there, they may not touch the ball for half an hour, but they're playing soccer. Why? Because they're running around on the field. It's, it's exercise, it's a social event for them, and it's, it's just very much fun. We've just joined up with the Boys and Girls Club of St. Louis, and we did a clinic there and had games. And the, the Club of Nations is a lot of immigrants had come and play. They practice um, in the city like eight times, I think, during the spring and the fall. And we help them with balls and nets and stuff and go down and do some coaching. And in fact, Tony Whelan from Manchester United was here last year. We went down and he spent more time taking pictures and signing autographs than anything. Because the, the immigrants in St. Louis, obviously, that's their background is soccer. You can pull over, if there's eight people playing soccer and not speak any of the languages they're speaking and jump in the game. And before you know it, you're, you're friends with three or four players without even talking. This, the game is, carries the spirit of enthusiasm itself. The most important part about playing as an athlete from six to 30 years old is to have fun. And the more fun you have, the more you play, the more you play, the better you get. So I was always into that mold. And I've been very fortunate to have a job in soccer my entire life. So I consider myself very lucky.